to welcome you all to our free cup of creativity in the literary lounge, a place where writing doesn't have to suck. I'm your host, Kendra Faith, and today I want to talk about me, I want to talk about I, I want to talk about number one on the, yeah, sorry, it's only two people here. <laughs> I want to talk about me, no, not necessarily me, I want to talk about Faith Publishing. So I'm going, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I am going to take this episode to talk about some of the programs and the services, and you are going to listen to me completely just freak out, and hopefully my enthusiasm goes through the little lo- little lovely earbuds and speakers and inspires you to jump on board and help me with all of this stuff, all right? I think it's going to be fun. So, of course, before I do, before I go on my rampage, I want to give a shout out to the Advanced Learning Library here at Wichita, Kansas. And they're a wonderful AV studio. I'm really happy that they have soundproof walls so they don't have to get into the computer center because I will tell you, with all of these mics, I could easily, easily be a walking mic. But that is for another time. That is for another time. The other thing I'll just say I want to be talking about is my passion, uh, Faith Publishing, Inc. We, our lovely hashtag is supporting the writing journey. And... It's more than just the writing journey. It is the whole creative journey. And one of the phrases, and it it just keeps on getting better the more I say it, is that we are the authors. We are the storytellers. We are the writers. I love that. I love that. Why do I love that? Because every single voice matters. Every story matters. Every single talent is utilized because every single story deserves to be told. We inspire and then we in turn get to hear and inspire. Oh my gosh, does that not just give you like goosebumps? I wish you could see my like, oh, so many goosebumps. Okay, so while I dive in and tell you about all of my wonderful ideas and I'm, I kind of arranged my sticky notes, I updated my website, I wanna share all that with you. But before I do, um, let's say the day in prayer. I know, say it loud, say it proud, put your hand on your heart like you mean it. Okay, all right, here we go. Today, I will face fear. Today, I will will be scared. Today, I will struggle. Today, I will grow. Today, I will get through this. Huzzah! Woo! Yay! I know, I didn't totally sing, but I was close. I was close. All right, my loves. So here's kind of what I want to do. I want to do, I want to have a conversation twofold. I want to share um, my ideas for programs, for writing programs, and then the other part of it is I want to share the services that Faith Publishing is actually offering. I'm I'm excited about not just like publishing and helping somebody write. Like don't get me wrong, I love teaching, I love working with people, I love listening to stories, I love helping people craft their stories, but I also want this journey to be self-sufficient. You know what I'm saying? I want this. I don't want to, like, I would love to ask for donations, and we can have fundraising, and we can build uh, scholarship funds and fellowship funds, and which is what, something I want to do. But I also, I think through that, we do that through faith. And um, I have, what is faith? Just, just call it faith. Um, programs. I have, you know, more could be made. More could be made. Who knows? We'll see what happens. The first one I want to talk about And you can actually find this on our website. That's Faith Publishing. That's F-A-Y-T-H-E, faithpublishing.org. If you just click on the button that says programs, um, it kind of gives you a little rundown of what we have going on. So the first one I want to talk about is called Family Folklore and Retreat. Now, why I have been, oh, I have been chewing on this for, oh my goodness, years, just years. Um, I come from a family of storytellers. I <laughs> I find them highly entertaining. Some of them are sad. Some of them are great. Some of them overcome obstacles. Some of them explain why my mother rearranges her furniture. Right? It, it explains why we are the way that we are. And first I wanted to do um, kind of a family folklore. I was thinking about making a book, honestly. Um, so I'm a fourth generation teacher. I did not want to be a teacher. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, everybody, I'm talking like my mom and dad, my aunts and uncles, and my grandparents, my great grandparents. We're talking like everybody, everybody, um, were teachers, did teach, and they then they coached something. 
And um, I really kind of wanted to start gathering um, stories and see if there's some kind of connection. And uh, that was kind of my first idea. Then I had another idea that a, a friend of mine, and I think I've talked about this before, a friend of mine, um, her husband, this is also a dear friend of mine, had was just recently diagnosed with lupus. And while I find that sad, because I am no one's going to know, and not to mention he was an amazing man, I felt that maybe there's something I can do and maybe I can help to let that idea go. And so that's kind of what's coming out of this first idea, a family circle and lupus. So with my friend, we are, I have a series of questions. So kind of the, what I want to do with this is so I have a series of questions. I have as many as I could think of, and some of them I've done some research, some of them I've read some other books, some of them I've talked to people. Um, I have them in chronological order. They can be answered in any order because I'm, I've got the attention span of your man. I jump all over the place, all over the place, right? Um, you know, one day I could be talking, you know, one moment I could be talking about puppies and like my favorite animal, and then the next thing I know, uh, it's about a doctor. Um, who knows? Who knows? Um, so I have a series of, of questions, of interview questions, and I've asked my friend and her family to gather up the family photos. And then I, what I am doing, what I am doing, and we're doing this two different ways because they're kind of like my guinea pigs. I'm really excited about it. Uh, the first one, she ha so uh, these friends of mine, they have, oh my gosh, how many of them do I have? Six kids? Six. I have six kids. I think at least five of them. Five of them can, th is, sh is showing up. And so we're going to have like an afternoon tea or a big brunch or whatever, and they're all going to drive to their mom's house, and um, we're going to tell stories. And so my job, or part of this program that I'm doing, is that I'm going to interview them. I'm going to transcribe all of their all of their notes. I'm going to put all of their stories into one letter, basically. Um, and then if they want, and we haven't we haven't crossed this bridge yet, um, we can maybe turn it into a memoir. I would be more than happy. I've got plenty of writers. We could maybe ghost write something. We could work on it together. My important thing, the important thing is, I don't want this to end poorly. And I think it would be really special for this family to have this. So that's kind of what um, this retreat is. You know, the, we're, we're doing, it's funny because my friends are like, well, the first time we're just going to have, you know, some food and hang out and like talk. And I'm like, okay, that would be great. And she's like, they're going to be great stories and we can talk about this. And then later on, she wants this adult, this, you know, uh, she wants adult snacks, adult beverages and adult stories about uh, her and her husband. And I, I'm really looking forward to it. And I think from that, we can have to, um, myself and my, my board members, we've been talking about actually maybe forming a retreat. It can be a group of friends. It can be a group of family. Um, we could organize maybe a bed and breakfast. You know, something where we can all be in close quarters and kind of the same thing, right? We can start, start with some questions. We can, um, I don't know, see what happens with our pictures. We can put them in order. It, 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 what's the great thing about stories is that I'm just collecting, which is something I do all the time. It, it's kind of like I get to research. I get the pleasure of researching, learning about your family and your friends and your stories. And then as a service, we're going to put that together and then give that back to the family. So that is one really, really cool program. I had to get that off my mouth. It was so big. So I think I think that would be great. Um, I will also, one more time, one more thing tied to this. Um, I would love to say that this is an original idea. Um, the first time I've ever seen this was um, my stepdad's family. Fascinating family. Fascinating. And every Christmas, they had Grandpa go, and he had his own special chair. And, every, and the thing is, after Christmas, everybody, d you know, we had our dinner, we would open presents, la la la. And then we, everybody, we're talking like everybody, and this is a huge family, everybody gathered around their grandmother and grandfather. And then they set out tape recorders, and they just talked about stories. And I thought that is just such a cool idea. I learned so much about that family. I learned that he was in the Olympic trials, that he ran against Jesse Owens, that my, you know, the grandmother was like one of the first uh, women to play a sport at Kent State. I was just like, what? 
you know, I, it was just fascinating. It was absolutely fascinating. So I kind of like to get all of these things and just turn it in together and create a service that I can help collect stories from. So I think that's a lot. And speaking of collecting stories, that's going to lead to my next program. The next program we are calling Town Chronicle. Now, I moved around a lot as a kid. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But I ended up um, going to junior high and a high school at a very, very small Kansas town. Like, we did not. We had our flashing, we had our flashing lights. We didn't really have a stoplight. I think if you counted the town and the nearby farmers, it might have been like <coughs> maybe 1,200, 1,500 people, if that, if that. Um, so I it's a town where everybody knows everybody. And you don't think that you're ever going to forget about that in growing up, you know, and what you do and what the kids do and how the, you know, the community, you know, works. Anyway, I was kind of thinking the town chronicles, I wanted it to focus on small town businesses. And what's kind of cool is there's people with on Facebook or if they tell, go to like their local chamber of commerce, there's tons, like some, some communities actually have like a county museum, something like that. I was kind of thinking that similar to the family folklore, I was thinking that w I could do something similar um, and create, I don't know, gather information from these towns because I know a lot of them have like these Facebook pages. Some of them have, like I said, museums and the library. I would like to go to a small town or have somebody, you know, on my crew go to a small town and create a book for them. Maybe this could be great for like a centennial or for a town celebration or, you know, something that this community does and they can use that as a fundraiser. It, uh, you know, I, I, I just think it would be great to have all of those stories in one place. They could do this every five years. They could do such and such. Um, the little town that I, I grew up in, I mean, I, I kind of think about like three small towns. Um, one was really well known for having a big time square with the good talk. And, you know, and they have, um, they would have a centennial and they'd have a parade and they'd have a big, uh, you know, a big celebration every single year. Um, another one I, you know, I grew up, I, I went to, um, an Indian reservation and I remember like one of the towns had this huge totem pole or like the first time I went to, um, a powwow. I, you know, I think all of those cultural things, um, should definitely be there. So that is something that I'm extremely excited about. I think it would be great to, you know, get together with the people who run the Facebook pages, um, know the stories of, I don't know, the one kid who always outran the cops because he loved, I don't know, messing with his car, or what is the one person that she never had kids, but she showed up to every single high school basketball game for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? I think that's endearing, and I think that that says a lot about our community, and I think it says a lot about our state. So I think that would be it. And I don't want to do – so uh, my, my focus or our focus for Safe Texas is underrepresented voices. So underrepresented voices, originally I look at homes, right? I look at students. I look at people that don't get hired. Maybe they're not going to go to L.A. or Chicago or have, you know, opportunity to talk to uh, publishers. Maybe they don't know how that is. Maybe they didn't know that somebody was really interested in their family unit. So it's any un any underrepresented voice. So originally, obviously, I started at home. Well, the great thing about traveling is, hey, guess what? There's stories there, too. There's stories there, too. And not every single story is told in English. And so the next program that I have, I've named it Global Narratives. So this past semester, this past semester, um, Safe Publishing um, published the first book of poetry in Spanish. And this was actually done through the Newton High School Spanish Club by the Spanish students. They wrote their own poetry. Everything is in English with the exception of a foreword that I wrote at the very beginning. Everything else is in English. Um, I think, especially for as many immigrants as we have in Kansas and how our state has been, you know, affected or influenced with immigrants and um, voices of other, um, you know, other languages than English, I think this story is really important. So, example, like yesterday, I just had a marvelous, I know 
Maria. I love it. I'm talking about you. A marvelous conversation with a student that I had, and she's from Brazil, and she loves writing poetry. And I talked about her before, and I'm like, you know, yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. I want to know about your life, and how is it the same as mine? You know, do we look at the, the color of – one of the conversations that we had yesterday, and we've actually done this before when we were writing poetry together, is we were talking about a certain color of blue. And so she was trying to describe to me that uh, there is a certain color of blue in uh, Portuguese, and it's named after a certain artist. And I, unfortunately, did not know that. So that's just one situation. You know, so that is one thing that she would know, whereas we were also talking about sunflowers, which is, of course, is the state flower of Kansas, and that is something that I know. And so having these narratives, even though they're from different parts of the world, I love that it brings us together. I love that we can see that everybody, maybe we experience very similar emotions or very similar thoughts. And I love that we can do that in different parts of the world. I, I think that's going to, I'm extremely excited for this. So um, my people that are bilingual, please contact us. Please contact us. I know that um, where I teach, there is a fairly large Hispanic uh, population. And I find it absolutely amazing listening to people that read their country's tongue connect to this and say that they hear it in their own tongue. And I think that is like, wow, so courageous and so amazing. I, I just, oh my goodness, how can they, how can you not ex be excited by those stories? I mean, and seriously, if you just listen and you are open and it's not threatening, it is in amazing. I, I know I need to pick a different word. I need to pick a different word that I will save that for Thesaurus Thursday. But it's just, I think the global narrative program is, is there's so much potential, so much potential. Okay, I'm moving on. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. In addition to, um, you know, language, being, you know, using a different language, being underrepresented, you know, being inclusive, I also want to focus on the impossible story. And you're like, <gasps> um, I have a, I've started a program. It's going to be called Voices from Home. And I would like to offer imprisoned writers free writing spaces. I would like to have them mentored. I would like to have, you know, provide an audience for their work. Um, recently, I listened to um, a news, I don't know, like a news story, and they were talking about how newspapers, and, you know, like sometimes um, inmates, depending on where they are, they only have certain privileges. Sometimes they can get on the computer. Sometimes they can have a TV. Sometimes they can do whatever. But a lot of times, they, um, because everything has to be filtered and checked. And I, and I understand that, and I'm not saying that there's anything bad or, you know, whatever about that. But what I found interesting is that the information coming in, I mean, it is warranted as safe, right? So it's not going to stir it up stir up any trouble, but on the flip side with it being, with that information being filtered or limited, that does not help the people that are incarcerated. And I, I firmly believe that writing is a way to rehabilitate people. I mean, I, it, what started for me teaching writing is actually helping people. You know, I was always, I worked in hospice care for years, and um, it always seemed that around, well, like one, the full moon, I believe what that sounds, a full moon, um, any like big weather changes, and definitely for the holidays, it kind of slowed it down. And especially now, because there's so much anxiety in our, you know, in our lives that kids and adults also, they don't know how to process. It is just stimulation overload. And I think there's a lot of students and a lot of young people um, or elder people, seriously, they are presented with certain situations and they don't have the skills to process it. So one thing that comes to mind is um, help children of divorced families, basically. Um, all of these students, myself included, uh, they are extremely loving and they want to help their family in any way, shape. And so a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times, Students will be like they want to talk to their parents and they want to you know be a, their their role as a child changes and sometimes it flips because they feel like they have to 
be the caretaker of their parents or the the brothers and sisters or whatever and while that is noble they don't have the skills to process all of that you know what i'm saying and anyway why that i think this is you know i I bring this up to the voices in the room is that there are so many men and women incarcerated you know and they don't have the skills to process what they're going through not to mention there's a huge disconnect because they are in a completely different their own society within that building the buildings of this in which they are housed and then what's happening to the outside of them and so i think having that link of the story you know between the two is extremely important i mean i think that um this will support expression and i think will also help create their own sense of power and hope and then of course create that bridge so i don't know i am thinking i'm really working on this um there are several programs that give like free books etc i want to focus mostly on writing and maybe you know publishing those those writings just so they can kind of somebody can have some kind of a connection so i think i think that would be a really impactful program my tie into my next point is called the Unalom Society. A Unalom, as you see on our website, is that funky, squiggly, weird looking symbol that I use for everything. Um, it is a symbol, you can see it in certain religions, you can see it in um, personal quests, you can see it, it's just, there's tons. And I like to use it when it comes to like writing and storytelling, you know, because it starts down at the bottom and it has a slight bit of like spiral and it's kind of short, you know, because hi, when you start out, you're young, or maybe you're starting your writing and you're young and you don't know what's going on and you kind of go in circles and then you can have twists and turns and twists and right and it keeps on building, 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 building until you have this nice straight line and then it stops. And that plays when you start using something as art. And I think that kind of represents what I feel like with the creative process, what I feel like with this, the building of this company is that, yeah, I'm totally spiraling. Mm -mm, I will, I'll own it. But I'm also going through twists and turns and I'm learning and I'm meeting amazing people and I'm collecting more stories and then seeing where the line goes. So I, my, the Yuna Loan Society is based off of that. And what I want to do with that is I want to kind of have a, just a group of writers, right? So I'm going to call it my Yuna Loan Society is going to be a community of dedicated writers and we are going to collaborate and we're going to seek feedback and we're going to share advice. Now this can, I think the way that I envision this can be kind of either like a weekly, just online. It just doesn't necessarily have to go anywhere per se. Um, the members can enjoy weekly coaching. We can have collaboration calls. Uh, but the thing that I also want to kind of up the ante, because I'm kind of morphing this for my TNT Writing Society, because a lot of people either maybe you know couldn't set it up or they were really intimidated because like one person was talking and the other person, you know, there's a lot to, to balance there. Um, but I would like to have kind of like an online community so we could all challenge each other, but I want to have quarterly challenges so they can actually help meet their, ra their writing goals. You know, do they want to have a, a, a stream, a screenplay? Do they want to write about, you know, they want to plot out the next five novels? Do they want to do such and such? And so I, I want to build a kind of a community. Right? So that's my society, my Unilone society. So that, that part I'm really, really excited about. My final program is going to be called a free thought session. It essentially, <coughs> it's just like a little one-on-one um, -on -one when you have writer's block or creative block, right? Um, uh, there's a quote that uh, Mike Rose, I believe, say, uh, says that writer's block is the, quote, the inability to begin or continue writing for reasons other than a lack of basic skill or commitment. Okay, you know, I get that. I've had writer's block of, like, maybe it's a lack of inspiration. Maybe it's depression. Maybe you're not feeling very well. Maybe you have a sense of dread. Whatever, whatever that is. I just want you guys to know that you don't have to have that. So if you're having, you know, you schedule a free thought session. I can help you. I have got a bajillion ideas that I can usually help pass on to you, right? So those are my programs. The Family Folklore, the Town Chronicles, the Global Narrative, the Voices Unchained, the Unilone Society, 
and the free thought tip. Those are my programs that I'm hoping that can help um, sustainability with the company. We can bring in some revenue, and that's going to also help us you know, in our other services, that's going to help us get those scholarship opportunities and, you know, build those other other um, writing programs. So, I know you're ready. Here's the other side of that coin. So we have programs on one side, and then I have services on another. So believe it or not, it's just not me rambling, and we actually do a lot of work. Um, the first and foremost is publishing. So I have decided because I, I can't do it by myself. I can, but I can't do it by myself. Um, my company will offer everybody, it can be any kind of um, content, any genre of work. Um, I will give you five hours of free time. I will read it, I will edit it, any submission, I can provi- offer you guidance, I can give you mentorship. Um, five hours for free for any book. I can help, I can help pretty much provide you everything that you need if you would like to have your book or some piece of work published. After that, you know, if you need more than five hours, then we need to find other things to do. So the publishing with my company, right now um, I offer all of your products can be found on Amazon, which is like worldwide. It can be as anything. Um, and I'm also, ha- it can be on Kindle. It can also be on Barnes and Noble. And I'm hopefully in the process of uh, getting Audible or audiobooks made of the material as well. That's something in the works. You know, I, I can't get it all done in one year, but that, that's okay. So that is my the first and foremost service that we do is publishing. So if you want to publish it, by all means, come talk to me. I will tell you because I am brutally honest and I don't lie very well. You can read the you know pretty much all over my face. Um, every story is made to be. It deserves to be told. I will tell you whether your story needs work or not. If it's if, if it's worthy of being told, then let's do it, right? Let's just giddy up and get it done, right? Um, if you like, I said, if you needed a little bit more work, and because your craft is not there, because remember, my whole entire hashtag is supporting the writing journal. Everybody is a storyteller. Everybody is a teacher. Seriously, we teach every you. We learn through teaching, right? Um, I will give you, we have, I'm going to have a thing called Saturday sessions and people can, can sign up one by one and we can book at least a 30 minute session and we can tackle any writing challenge. So get on our website, the spacepublishing.org and go to Saturday sessions. You can click the little button that says schedule here and you can schedule it. We can do it online. I can do a phone call. We can meet face to face and we'll just work through what you're, what you're needing. So if you are like, yeah, I have this book, and I really want to publish it, and you think it's going to be great, and da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, that's super. I'll give you five hours, but if we're not done with that, then then we are working together. That's when we can kind of fine-tune the book. So that'll be kind of – I'm really looking forward to that as well. Um, another, one, another service that we do is proofing, and it all goes together, is proofing and copy editing. Um, and it kind it kind of I kind of have like a menu of sorts because proofreading and light editing and um, you know rewriting is completely different. So I I range it from let's say developmental writing is I'm just like looking at structure or um, you know the flow or just kind of like the overall content. We can sub- you know we'll only charge you X amount per thousand words. Or if you need proofreading, like if I need to go line by line and line by line and I'm looking at every single typo or a verb change or transition, then then that will also come in. So that it's going to be exciting because, I mean, I, we've, help, we've helped people before. I've had previous students who are in college that, you know, just want some help editing their paper. I have helped um, academic colleagues where um, English is not their first language. And they are preparing to get, you know, published in a journal. So they just needed, you know, the readability, that kind of thing. So we can actually offer quite a few. I mean, what's neat about the space publishing is we're so versatile. In some cases, I almost think that that we can be overwhelming because there's so many things that we can help you with. So that's neat. So we have, obviously, we have publishing. We have proofreading. We have copy editing. Um, I am going to start, we wanted to do this um, a yearly 
writing contest for the writers in the state of Kansas. Um, it's going to be called Echoes of a Story. So um, that's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, my goal is to have like a yearly anthology and publish that. And then, of course, do like the top three poems being by the an editor's choice. I just want to get that out there. I need to. I would like to get the voices of Kansas out there. So that's another another service that, that we're going to be doing. Um, we're hoping to schedule writing workshops this fall. Um, and I want the the workshops are going to pretty much. I'm going to ask for feedback first off. So far, um, I've had asked people uh, they want to work on like children's books. I've had one suggestion that maybe they can have a workshop on writing through grief or using writing to help you through grief or trauma. Maybe they want a workshop that only focuses on poetry. But we'll be doing that in the fall. So uh, that is going to have a wide, a wide, wide, wide variety of topics. I think that's just going to be, oh my God, it's going to be so exciting about that. Um, and then I have like two more, two more. One also probably in the fall, I want to have a literary fest. Oh boy. <laughs> I want to have a conference. I want to have a writer's conference in Kansas. Yep, not Kansas City, Missouri. I want it in Kansas. I want to have speakers. I want to have students. I want to have poets. And I want to have storytellers and other, you know, numerous events and exhibits. And I want to have celebrations. And I want to have a place that we can create and connect and talk who doesn't love talking to books. So that's going to be coming up. I'm really excited about that. And then my final thing that I want to talk about with regards to safe place, safe publishing, is a movement. I want to start a creative movement, right? Uh, we're calling it Ink to Impact. And I want to focus, obviously, more than just writing, more than just the author. I want to positively impact communities by offering experience to the publishing industry. Um, I want to have places, you know, opportunities for community outreach, uh, website management, uh, editing, writing, um, operations management, marketing. Um, oh, my gosh. Teaching workshops, organizing things. I would like to create, I would like to have those impacts to be, one, with our writers and stories, and then to, I want to call it, create our industry. Because with the last I checked, uh, there's, there are some publishers in Kansas, there are some print, you know, some places that will print books. I still, I have yet to find anybody that wants to grow a community. And I think that would be absolutely beautiful. And finally, here's my final thing. And I came, came about this doing some research, and it is so absolutely perfect. And I've, I've talked about Margaret Atwood several times, and she has this quote. And I actually I put it on my website. I love it so much. And it is, quote, in the end, we'll all become poets. Yeah, that's what I want. I want us to all become poets. And I think that we can do that through our programs like Safe, uh, the uh, Family Folklore, the Chronicles of the Town, the Unilone Society, the Saturday Sessions, right? The Literary Fest. All of this is going to help us become poets. Dream big. So, I hope that you're excited. I'm excited. I hope that I have inspired you, and I hope that I've given everybody some ideas about how you would like to become involved. Be sure to go to our website, safepublishing.org. Send us a note. Let me know what you want to do. Really, because, hey, make this, a, make this your time to share. Share and, and share your world. This is going to be great. Because I get to share a story in a literary way that hopefully will inspire you. Out of storification and out of fiction. Until next time.